Making the sequel to a game like Destiny is hard. Hard in the way that making a sequel to anything that people love is hard. But it's, it's challenging because we have this game that brings people together over and over and with making a sequel, one of the first things we thought about doing was how are we going to bring more people into this world? Whether you're steeped in Destiny lore and you've read every Grimoire card and you've played for thousands of hours, or you're brand new to Destiny, you can get something out of Destiny too and you start at the same spot. We are trying to make it a fresh start for everyone. We had sort of two pretty clear paths. Path A was a path where we keep doing, taking King style expansions going forward. Path B was ultimately the path that we chose, which was whenever a game comes out with a number on it, it's an opportunity to bring people into the universe, to bring more players into the world. We have a game that's sticky in that it brings players back together each week. It allows routines to be formed. Destiny's a game that can replace things like poker night or book clubs. It allows us to have experiences like golf night, but you're shooting monsters or you're trying to go to the lighthouse in Destiny 1. It creates excuses, it creates reasons for players to come together and play the game each week. Those are elements that are key that we want to preserve, but then take another whack at some of the ingredients when we're putting this thing together. Enemy charge detonated. Getting the story right has been super, super important for us this time. And by getting it right, that means telling a story that people can relate to with memorable characters, you know, epic moments, and ultimately something that people can sink their teeth into. There's also the story of the worlds that you're going to. They're gonna discover by going on adventures. Giving the universe a sense of progress was important to us. Previously, we had a really strong subculture of people who got deeply into the Destiny lore and loved it. But it's a niche. We think more people can get into this. We're approaching storytelling not just from a basic A plot and cinematic perspective, but like how do we take story and put it throughout the game world? How do we put it in such a way that everyone who plays Destiny believes this is a really compelling world. I want to know more about its characters. I want to know more about its history. Inspired by the lore and the fiction that's been the grimoire, what if that was in game? by finding these exotic weapons in the world, these exotic pieces of armor, and they were learning more about the characters and the history and the universe and the fiction of Destiny. <laughs> Destiny is an incredible experience that has a lot of depth to it. And if you figure it out, if you crack that nut, you can see there are tons of things to do for you. Now we're trying to make it a lot more simple to know what to do. Designing a sequel and a game that can welcome new people in is all really related to this one principle that's been driving a bunch of Destiny 2's design, which is you know, something I call unhiding the fun. If you see an activity on the destination, that's because you haven't done it yet. You can do it. Great, it's like whack-a-mole, just get it done. And that will be in your milestone tray. These are the things you can pull up at any point and they'll tell you like, hey, the next most important things to do, we, we think are this. You don't need to do them, but if you do them, this is the tier of reward you're gonna get. The difficulty, certainly at the pinnacle level of the game, we've tried to make a much tougher game that if you think of your weapons and items as a golf bag, we want you to look into your golf bag before you start an activity and go like, oh, what should we bring to this? Um, because for some of those activities, you're going to be loadout locked once they start, which means you can't change. I think there's a thing that made Destiny 1 hard to enjoy, and I'm going to summarize it really simply as a lack of progress. Why am I doing this? Does it matter? Is it going somewhere? We didn't do a great job of answering all those questions holistically. Yeah, you're doing this because you're getting ready for a last battle. You want to feel like the game you're playing has a sense of progression. The other side of the progress word here is investment progression. We have had multiple different versions of the investment game in Destiny, like how do we reward players for playing? And I think we again, in TTK, started to turn the ship and get it into a better place for the franchise. And I think Destiny 2 is gonna be our next take on that. We're trying to really look when we're making a sequel, how do we make this a new platform for years of ongoing content and make it easier for people to get into? You wanna be the game where you can encounter other people. I want to be the game where you turn a corner, there's something amazing happening, and there are other people to play with. We think of those people as potential friends, and we think of our world as a place where you can meet people who become your potential friends. Destiny is a game where you explore the ruins of a lost civilization, shooting monsters and aliens with your friends. 
where you create a character and you move him or her around all these different activities, whether they're single player, cooperative, competitive, and it's that same character that grows over the course of several years. And you're doing that in the presence of other people. One of the things I love about games is the moment they're new and the moment you can have a conversation about them. I am consumed in many ways by the opportunity to surprise and delight. There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't want us to talk about at all because I think it represents potential surprises and things that we want you, the player, to experience on your own without us telling you it's going to be good. We're still in our own space, like we're still the game where players can bump into each other, players can form friendships that we hope last a lifetime. And I think in 2017, it's still a pretty unique position and we're trying to push it farther. When we sit down to think about what do we want to do with Destiny and where do we want to take Destiny the franchise, a lot of it's going to be about how is this going to allow players to create and form memories that we hope they'll carry with them forever. Not getting up from that. Zavala, we're good. Well done. Thanks for watching this IGN First on Destiny 2. If you like Destiny, make sure to check out youtube.com slash fireteamchat, our weekly Destiny show that airs every Friday at 5. And don't forget to come back and check out more IGN First coverage on Destiny 2.